What is up investors and welcome back to the Everything Crypto Show where we bring you the latest and most important news moving the crypto markets every single day. And we are back today with a crucial market update as the security and privacy of Ethereum have been majorly threatened following an update by the largest Ethereum node provider. Then we got to talk about Sam Bankman-Fried who will be showing face at a New York Times financial event next week even after all of the chaos and damage he has caused in the crypto markets. And last but not least we got to talk about crypto.com and the multiple upgrades they have made across their different platforms. So without further ado it is time to sit back relax grab that morning cup of joe and enjoy the show happy friday everyone i hope you all had an amazing week and i'm wishing you all an amazing weekend ahead if you've not yet hit that sub like and notification bell and join the everything crypto squad please consider doing so and i love and appreciate you all now with that we're gonna hop right in here with the question of the day and today's question is bitcoin or ethereum and why let me know in the youtube comments down below and you guys know that bitcoin and eth is my top one and top two position uh by a couple percent percentage basis points difference with ethereum being the largest one and i simply view bitcoin as lower risk lower reward and ethereum as higher risk and higher reward but either way i still think these are probably the two safest investments in terms of the broader crypto market markets with bitcoin definitely being the safest in my opinion and we're going to talk about the massive threats to ethereum as mentioned in just a little bit but first i do want to walk you guys through the charts here as there are a couple of different things i am noticing and i do think it is important to be vigilant about these key indicators in the upcoming week so we have discussed a lot this week that i think bitcoin miners are due for one last capitulation phase before we can start that accumulation phase and i'm going to walk you guys through some on-chain data that i think really supports the fact that we will see one more sell off from these bitcoin miners before we actually see a clean reversal however do keep in mind that bitcoin at the moment at 16.5k is still a couple of percent below even that june low at 17.5k and given the fact that there is really nothing good in the micro right now in the cryptoverse there is nothing really good happening in the broader economy as well nothing that would support any sort of a long-term bullish reversal here i definitely think it is much more likely that bitcoin does retest 15k rather test 15k for the first time as opposed to retesting 17.5 and even if bitcoin did want to climb from here all the way up to 17.5k the unfortunate truth is bitcoin is nowhere near looking bullish we would actually have to rally here about 50 percent back up to that 200 week moving average sitting at 24k so with bitcoin currently sitting at 16.5k definitely does not look very likely in my opinion or also given like the broader the broader environment right in terms of the macro and the micro and once again i will remind you that whether this is your first bear market or not we are all effectively seeing bitcoin in uncharted territory here this is the first time bitcoin has broken below a previous bull runs all-time high and that was definitely broken here once we went below 20,000. and then additionally you're going to notice that the 200 week moving average has often acted as a strong level of support as a fantastic buying opportunity if you had bought bitcoin off of the 200 week moving average both times it did this the first time you could have made about 288 percent on your money and if you'd done the same thing here in 2020 you could have made about 12 000 percent so sorry 1200 percent so the point being yes historically the 200 week moving average has been a very strong buying level but not this time around and that is why i actually do suspect bitcoin does have room to go to the downside and you guys know that the true downside target i am looking for here on bitcoin where i will be accumulating more is in fact at that 12 to ten thousand dollar range and we did discuss previously how if we actually make this move down to twelve thousand, that would fall more in line with the previous drawdowns uh, from all-time highs for bitcoin which do tend to be in the mid 80 percent range currently we are only down about 75 percent and yeah 83 percent would put us exactly at about 11.2k that is in and around the range that i am personally eyeing on bitcoin now as for ethereum the level i'm eyeing on eth is actually down here in the mid 600 level and if you don't think this is likely i will remind you that i called out a very easy short here on ethereum at 2k following the merge i said we were going to come right back down to this 200 week moving average as it does tend to act as a magnet for ethereum's price action and that was in fact a very easy short of about 40 percent now we've actually seen eth break below that 200 week moving average and i think it is more than reasonable to assume that if bitcoin is going to break below 15k and given the fact that bitcoin is already below its june low i definitely think ethereum is coming in for a retest of that june low i think it is more than likely anyways and it's definitely worth noting that eth does actually capitulate harder than bitcoin near the tail end of bear market 
And I know for sure that some people would like to hope and assume that maybe this bear market will be previous or will be different from the previous ones. But personally, I think that this bear market has proven it has actually seen a lot of similarities from previous bear markets. And the main thing being here is the fact that in the last bear market, we actually had a nice bear market rally from about 365 all the way up to 885, making a move of about 117% to the upside. Now, if you compare this to the move that Ethereum did make in this bear market from 885 all the way up to about this $2,000 level, that was yet again a rally of over 115%, give or take. And that is another reason that we did in fact call this short here at 2k when the opportunity presented itself because Ethereum literally made the exact same move that it was making here in the previous bear market and take a look at what happened after Ethereum. It did make this bear market rally last time. Boom. It still cratered 90% from this bear market rally high of about what was this here about $800 all the way down to 100. So yes, Ethereum definitely can have rallied like this 120% and still end up capitulating further. And keep in mind here that if Ethereum does actually drop from that bear market rally high of 2K down to 650, that is only a 67% decline when compared to the 90% decline in the last bull run or bear market, sorry. So yeah, I definitely don't think that is unreasonable whatsoever. And that is why I will be looking for 650 on ETH specifically. Now we're going to hop into the Bitcoin news here, starting off, uh, starting off with a note from a new Harvard University economics paper that explains why banks should hold Bitcoin. Bitcoin and effectively talks about Bitcoin as a hedge against financial sanctions by fiat reserve currency issuers. For example, from 2016 to 2021, countries facing a higher risk of U.S. sanctions increased the gold share of their reserves more than countries facing a lower risk of U.S. sanctions. This paper explores the potential for Bitcoin to serve as an alternative bridging asset. So effectively, we've been talking here on the channel for a while how Bitcoin is in fact just a much better version of gold, the digital version of gold that can also act as a store of value. It also does serve as somebody's access to trade transferring money through peer-to-peer -peer blockchain networks and not going through a third party like a bank. And uh, that is definitely a massive value proposition for Bitcoin. That is why it is the clear winner when compared to gold, in my opinion. And I think gold has a market cap of over 10 trillion. Compare that to Bitcoin sitting down here with a market cap of about 320 bill. And clearly, Bitcoin does have a lot of room to run if, and in my opinion, when it does become as popular as gold in terms of that sort of like asset reserves mentality that I do think is beginning to grow on people. Now, I do unfortunately have to also give you guys the bad news, and that is the Bitcoin miners. So these Bitcoin miners are capitulating still, or rather, I think they are really preparing to capitulate, and we've been watching them for a while for really a main reason. So this bear market has effectively been a very obscure one from the others for the sole reason that these, these miners have not given up on Bitcoin. And what I would say is probably one of the worst bear markets, not only for crypto, but actually for the miners. So you're going to notice here that in previous bear markets, when the, when the price of Bitcoin declines, the hash rate does also tend to decline somewhat. This is pretty much the first bear market where the hash rate has just continued to soar despite the price of Bitcoin declining. The network difficulty has continued to soar as well, which proves that more and more miners are fighting to validate their blocks and get this Bitcoin as a reward. At the same time here, that it is getting more and more difficult to mine a new block for the blockchain. And then we also have the miner revenue coming back down here to 2020 levels as obviously the rising cost of energy and the lowering price of Bitcoin versus the US dollar has really been hampering their business. Now we are in fact waiting for this minor capitulation as I do see it as a major risk to the crypto markets and I definitely think we can see the signs of that based on this chart here. So you're going to notice that let's take a look here at about March of 2022 to April of 2022. This dark blue here indicates that these miners were holding more Bitcoin and the light blue indicates they were holding less. And what you're going to notice is that with the exceptions of Marathon, Hut 8, and Riot, you can see that the rest of these miners actually went from being in the dark to median blue down to light blue, effectively indicating that they've been selling off mass amounts of Bitcoin. Core Scientific year went from having 9,600 Bitcoin in April down to just over 1,000 in September. And they did, in fact, de declare bankruptcy a couple weeks back or said that they would have to declare bankruptcy if they did not receive any funding by the end of the year. Same thing here goes with with Argo blockchain as well. So definitely these miners are in a lot of trouble. And I do think we are still going to see that one more capitulation phase before we can actually enter the accumulation phase. And you're going to notice here that this is like the one bullish thing we can say about it for Bitcoin. And that is the exchange reserve. So 
The exchange reserve as of February of 2020 was sitting at just over 3 million. That is now down to just about 2 million. So yes, we have seen a 33% decline in the amount of Bitcoin that actually sits on exchanges. And that is incredibly bullish because it signals that people are pulling their Bitcoin off of exchanges, putting it in cold storage and removing it from the float. So to have 2 million Bitcoin left on exchanges, I mean, that makes up like what? About 10% of the total supply of Bitcoin. Yeah, there's 2.1 mil. So that's about 10 percent of the total supply of bitcoin that is on exchanges and the rest of it is in fact still to be brought into the float or hiding off in cold storage and that does mean bullish things for when the price action does pick up again and there are more people on the buying side than on the selling side now in terms of the bitcoin miners here, you're going to notice that in 2020 we actually had about 18 or 1.8 million in terms of those minor reserves and what do you know that is now sitting at about 1.85 million up slightly from 1.83 million so in the past two years we have pretty much seen no changes to the bitcoin miner reserves that is definitely a little bit concerning given the fact that yeah they effectively have been set back to 2020 prices in terms of that revenue and now also in terms of their actual miner reserves and unfortunately we do need to see strength from the bitcoin miners before we actually do consider any sort of bullish reversal here for bitcoin so that is what i'm looking for when it does come to og daddy bitcoin now taking a look at ethereum I mean, once again, it's still deflationary since the merge. So in the past 70 days, 3,265 ETH has in fact been taken out of the float. We're actually not going to focus too much on the supply of Ethereum and the burn mechanism today because I think the news is much more important here and much more threatening to Ethereum. And that is the fact that Consensus wants your IP address, crypto wallet, and a bank account. And if you are wondering who Consensus is, while well, they are in fact the owner of MetaMask, the largest Web3 wallet that is used on Ethereum, and Infura, the largest node service provider for Ethereum. So they are now formally collecting IP and Ethereum wallet addresses of users as they did revise their privacy policy on the 23rd of November. And they basically said that it would hoover up the data when using Infura as the default remote procedure call provider. So alongside IP and wallet addresses, Consensus says it collects usernames, passwords, gender information, financial data such as asset holdings, bank account numbers, and bank routing numbers as MetaMask does support Visa and a MasterCard for purchases for crypto. So the only cases uh, where they will not be collecting your IP address is when a user utilizes their own Ethereum node or a third-party RPC provider. However, this is really not that big of a difference because Infura is a primary node backbones of the Ethereum ecosystem, allowing Web3 dev devs to connect their apps to ETH via APIs and other tools. Its uh, popularity definitely has been a sticking point for decentralization purists for years. And Consensus did formally acquire them back in 2019. MetaMask is one of the Web3 apps that relies on Infura by default. It's a self-custody crypto wallet allowing over 21 million monthly active users to interact with these dApps on the Ethereum blockchain via their web browser. So this update uh, follows a similar move by decentralized exchange Uniswap, which recently said it does collect some on-chain data to improve user experience. But obviously, this definitely has left a lot of people concerned about the centralization aspect of crypto, specifically of Ethereum, which we've been saying for a while. If you guys don't think Ethereum is already incredibly centralized, get a grip, okay? I am very bullish on ETH. It is my largest position in the portfolio. But yes, the centralization threat definitely does exist. And this is yet again a reminder of that. So here is a updated terms of their information that is automatically provided. They cheekily did just throw in here that the log data may include information such as as the user's internet protocol address, device and browser type, operating system, pages or features of our sites, blah, blah, blah. Basically, they're going to be able to, to get a lot more information on you than they would have before given this update. Once again, proving that if you actually want true decentralization, I'm sorry, but Bitcoin is pretty much the only place that you are going to get that. And this does in fact come just a couple of months after Infura blocked Tornado Cash following the treasury ban. So we saw a couple months back uh, in the wake of the whole sort of Tornado Cash thing and the ban with the U.S. sanction that Infura did go ahead and ban, uh, ban Tornado Cash following this U.S. sanction order. So once again, indicating that Ethereum is not censorship resistant, that it definitely can still be influenced by regulations, by sanctions, as we did see Infura go ahead and do this in response to what happened over there with the whole Tornado Cash incident. And guess who, in fact, owns a big stake of consensus? None other than JP Morgan. So very interesting to hear this from the same bank where their CEO actually called crypto decentralized Ponzi schemes. 
when he in fact is invested in one of the most centralized cryptocurrencies out there and that is ethereum it was actually confirmed that jp morgan has about a 10 percent stake in consensus who once again is the owner of both metamask and infura so despite what jp morgan says they have their slimy hands all over crypto and you can clearly tell that ethereum is the bangers coin okay we've known this for a while we've always known this to be a case and in fact it does make me more bullish on eth because i know that it is the chosen one but at the end of the day i definitely do not approve of the steps that have been taken here to impede on our security and privacy and i think this definitely will receive some backlash so i will keep you guys in the loop on what goes on with this whole consensus situation now we saw sam bankman fried here confirm that he will in fact be talking with Andrew Sorkin at the Dealbook Summit next Wednesday. So what is the Dealbook Summit? This is actually the New York Times event that is taking place. He's going to be speaking alongside people like Ben Affleck, like Mark Zuckerberg. Like he is talking among some very big names here at this event by Secretary Janet L. Yellen. How is Sam Bankman fried allowed to speak at an event with people like this after what he just pulled off in the crypto industry? I honestly have no idea what is going on here how he can be even like considerably se selected to still be speaking at this event how he can still be on the website and how is he tweeting about this like why are regulators why is law enforcement not all over this man what after what he has done to the crypto community and never mind to cryptocurrency as an asset class but to the actual people here that he screwed over it really makes no sense to me that this man is still uh still on the loose and then we have the actual dev of tornado cash who is still locked up to the best of my knowledge and if you guys like need any sort of reminder of some of this man's crimes, keep in mind that in the bankruptcy filing, it was revealed that FTX lent Sam Bankman fried over $1 billion for personal use. FTX used customer funds to buy houses for employees. They didn't even have a list of employees and what they all did. They did not keep any books on records of its digital assets. Alameda Research was exempted from auto liquidation on FTX. They also built a software to hide the misuse of customer funds on FTX. FTX had $400 million in unauthorized transfers the day that they filed for bankruptcy. They had billions of investments other than crypto, but there are no books or records of any of it. And Sam Bankman fried made all business decisions on apps that auto-deleted everything after some time, also encouraging employees to do the same. So definitely a lot to hide here, and I think it is definitely like very apparent why they tried to keep this under wraps. But the matter of fact is, this is extreme fraud and theft. There is no way this was an accident. This was incredibly malicious malicious and yet he's still talking um like aside even people like the secretary janet l yellen to me that is just incredibly ridiculous i don't know how people are really like taking note of this and not doing anything about it and if he actually does end up speaking at this event i think it will speak a lot to some of these connections we have highlighted between sam makeman freed between the sec between certain political parties i definitely think that something is very fishy here and although we do not have the whole story yet i do think eventually it will reveal itself now, not to mention the fact that Sam Bankman fried started tweeting these very weird cryptic tweets on November 15th, and it was basically discovered that these tweets were a bunch of nonsense. Once again, he said, I'm sorry, I underestimated the liquidity, completely disregarding the fact that he was using customer funds at FTX to fund risky bets at Alameda Research, and then it was further confirmed that he was typing his thread in slow motion and deleting his select tweets simultaneously so that bots would not figure out he was deleting his tweets. He was basically deleting an important tweet that could be considered evidence and then tweeting a proxy tweet in its place so that it would not mess with his actual tweet count too much so clearly a lot to hide here this should all be saved and under investigation and instead this man is talking at financial events because anybody would trust him when it comes to finance after what he pulled off i really do not get it but i definitely will be curious to see if he does end up speaking at this event or if these people smarten up and actually decide to finally give him a boot and never mind that but actually arrest him and hold him accountable for his actions now we're going to wrap things up here talking about crypto.com and ironically after what happened with FTX I think crypto.com has been like one of the most fudded exchanges, one of the most wrongfully fudded exchanges as they have done nothing but continue to build throughout this bear market. And the first thing to remind you guys of here is if you do have access to the exchange 3.0, you are going to be able to enjoy 0% trading fees for selected spot pairs this holiday season, including for Bitcoin, ETH, Polkadot, XRP, AVAX, Chainlink, Matic, uh, Cardano, Shiba Inu, and Dogecoin. Now, if you've not yet signed up for the crypto.com exchange, feel free to use my referral code in the description down below 
And I think it is a very smart business decision on behalf of crypto.com to potentially take some losses here on 0% trading fees in exchange once again for that customer acquisition at a time when the FIFA World Cup is going on. So definitely a very good business strategy from crypto.com in my opinion to continue to onboard more users and really prepare for the next bull run whenever that does come around. Now, another very impressive upgrade they did actually make came out of the DeFi wallet here and the Earn tab specifically, as they're really trying to make it a lot easier for people to get involved in DeFi, get involved in some of this passive income opportunities that are being offered. So the first thing I noticed here is that right at the top, they have actually offered different sort of like categories now for your staking. So if you want the Kronos ecosystem, stable coins, single staking, liquidity pool staking, Ethereum staking, you can just select the tab there. The other thing that I do like is they've actually given you a visual display of the liquidity pairs. So VVS to Crow and the APR, Crow to USDC, Crow, the single Crow staking here through the crypto.org chain. Then you got Crow to USDT, VVS to USDC, Crow to Tonic, USDC, USDC. DT to die, but that is a stable coin staking through Faro protocol. So I definitely like the new look of this DeFi wallet and the earn tab, making it a lot more accessible. And another big upgrade here that I do like, and this has been here for a while, but once again, just super impressive is the fact that they have began to integrate other blockchains into their earn tab here. You can see that via the Polygon chain, they have a Qui to Matic liquidity pool via Optimism. They have Velo to USDC and then via ETH, they have a link to USDC pool a, a matic to wrapped eth pool a, a wrapped matic to usdc pool i mean they're really just broadening the amount of staking services that they are actually providing and given what is happening right now with metamask given what is happening with consensus and infura we could actually see a massive shift here from these services to the crypto.com DeFi wallet so the more these competitors do tend to do things like this the more it actually does try drive, drive traffic and potentially new customers to crypto.com as they have not made any sort of announcement about tracking people's IP addresses through their DeFi wallet, which is in fact said to be a straight competitor to MetaMask. So the, once again, the more that the competition does sort of make moves like this, and the more that Crypto.com does continue building, it does fare well for them in my opinion, and they may actually be able to scoop up a lot of the customers that may potentially be leaving other platforms, as well as onboarding new users. So a very solid business strategy from Crypto.com, one that I do think will pay off, especially when the next bull run does reignite so without further ado i hope you guys did enjoy the content in today's video you know what to do if you made it all the way to the end you are an absolute champion let me know in the youtube comments down below and claim that champion status i hope you're all having an amazing friday and i hope to catch you in the next one peace out for now